Hello, I'm Dennis Polis. Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. In this video we will be continuing our discussion of the mind, but this time we're going to be turning to the problem of free will. Free will, of course, is critical to questions of ethics and morality, and also to understanding ourselves and taking responsibility for our actions. Previously we've seen that while natural science has a great deal to say about the brain and how it processes data, naturalism, the philosophical spin that says that natural science is all that we need, has nothing to offer in the way of a complete model of the mind. Because in the mind we not only process data, but we are aware of the data that we are processing. Further, we are able to make choices, to will, this is something beyond the scope of any kind of physical model. A deterministic model allows no room for choice, and a quantum mechanically random model does not make us responsible for choices. Rather, it would have choices appear spontaneously without any causes whatsoever. We know from experience that we deliberate, weigh our options, and choose, and that we are the source of these choices. On the other hand, we know that Cartesian dualism doesn't work because of the mind-body problem. Descartes' idea of the mind as the thinking thing has no way to affect matter. So I proposed a third way, the two-subsystem theory of mind. In it, the brain is responsible for processing data, but we also have an intentional subsystem which consists of our intellect and will and that is responsible for awareness and making choices. We overcame the mind-body problem by noting that the laws of nature are essentially intentional. Therefore, our intentions are the same kind of thing as the law of nature and capable of modifying them. That was theoretical, so then we looked at the data and found substantial confirmation of our ability to affect matter through intentionality. In the last three videos, we've seen how our intentions are radically different from the kinds of things that are studied in natural science. We found the inadequacy of thinking that a computer could model the mind. We found that physics abstracts away everything which is essential to our subjectivity, to our awareness. And we found, lastly, that the kinds of objects that are manipulated by computers and the brain namely physical states, signify in a radically different way than our ideas. So ideas are not reducible to brain states or modeled by computer states. There are many definitions for free will, but what most of us mean by freedom is that we have multiple choices that are really within our power and that we choose from between them. That does not mean that our freedom is unlimited. It's constrained by our circumstances, by our abilities, and so on. Still, we are able to choose. We can choose this course of action or that. I can stay here or I can go to the store. I can choose to be loving or I can choose to be selfish. The arguments that naturalists bring against freedom are all theoretical. They are all based on some unsubstantiated theory, a theory which is not known to apply to human consciousness and human choice, but rather a theory that is being extended outside of its verified range of application. So what we are faced with is a choice between experience and theory. What is the experience of free will? It is the experience of having multiple possibilities that are actually within our ability and then choosing from among them. Let's talk about that for a second. What is an option which is within my ability? Well, staying here and continuing this video or going to the store is within my ability. Things which are not within my ability are things like teleporting to the moon or going back in time and other things. So there's a clear definition of what is actually possible and what is impossible. It is only by a distortion of language and experience that naturalists can say that things which we know are in our power are in fact not in our power. This is an a priori assumption made by naturalists and unsupported by any data. What is the principal argument which naturalists bring against free will? It's causal determinism. 
naturalists understand causes as prior events determining later events. But we know from studying physics that the initial state, the prior events, do not determine later events by themselves. It is only via the laws of nature that prior events are able to determine what will happen later on. But we have seen that the data show that our minds can alter the laws of nature. We've seen that this is verified to 18 standard deviations, way beyond any rational doubt. Thus, since we can modify the laws of nature, we are not determined by the laws of nature, and our will is free. Thank you for watching, and please leave comments.